actually trying to do some practical stuff like implementing a snark circuit to process a roll of transactions. So if you want to follow along, uh, you are welcome to. Yeah. So if you want to uh, install any requirements, they are over here, and this this link is public. I cannot buy a domain, so it's, uh, you can use this one. Uh, yeah. Yeah. That's a question. Is there anything more? I mean, are you going to do anything more than following some uh, tutorials on the online or? Yeah. Uh, I created this tutorial, and it's uh, mostly going to be like me explaining what's uh, what, how how uh, rollup works, and maybe creating a circuit for it uh, live. Done off chain in a on a on a smart contract on Ethereum chain. So for rollup, we, we basically do all the signature aggregation, balance checks, changing all the balances for the participants involved in our transactions off chain, and we batch all the transactions together and submit the snark proof as well as the compressed transactions on chain. So as a so ZK rollups are basically a layer two solution, and unlike Plasma, uh, we don't really have to worry about things like data being not available uh, and uh, users being uh, uh, like in Plasma users have to continu continuously watch their coins so that they can come, uh, they can be active and submit challenges if anything bad happens, right? Rollup has no such assumptions, so a snark proves the validity that the transaction, that the computation done off-chain is actually valid, right? So it's, a, it's, a, it's, it's pretty simple. So we have two actors involved in a roll-up chain. There's a coordinator and there is user. So the coordinator uh, basically takes all the transactions, which like inputs and signatures on the users via RPC endpoint, or API, or anything like that. And he basically uh, generates a batch and passes all all the transactions to the snark circuit. The snark does all the uh, processing and emits uh, the up updated root hash and the snark proof. So uh, on 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 an Ethereum smart contract, we we maintain a balances uh, Merkle tree, right? So it's like the Merkle tree and the leaves contain uh, balances and accounts of all the users, right? And uh, this this uh, uh, root hash of this Merkle tree can only be updated by a snark proof, right? So uh, as soon as the batch is processed by a coordinator, he submits the snark proof on chain, and uh, the on chain verifier checks if the proof is correct. And if the proof is correct, the new new root is up, updated in the con smart contract, right? So yeah, this is why. Rollup seems really amazing to me. So it has no exit games, and it has no likeness assumptions, no data availability issues. The transaction fees is still very, very less, 
Yeah, and basically we can create roll-up chains not only for payments. We can do stuff like crypto kitties. We can do uh, stuff stuff like what Fairwind did, like any any sort of smart contract, right? So it's basically a snark storage layer. Basically, you can put in anything you want in a in the leaf of the Merkle tree, and it will work, right? Yeah. So uh, for the purpose of this. Uh, tutorial sort of thing. We are using Circom and SnarkJS. They are basically JavaScript based compilers. Yeah, and these are basic commands. Uh, you can like uh, hop hop back to them whenever it's needed. We'll, we'll we'll mostly need them every time we do a compilation and we create an input, right? So uh, I'm just going to show how to create one one simple constraint, which is like a arithmetic constraint. We are going to see if a plus b equals c and create a snark snark proof for it, right? So uh, so that we can go anywhere and proof and like prove to someone that this computation was done correctly, right? So it's pretty simple as as you can see. Just like create a template. Template is just like a circuit, and b uh, and and the inputs they are called uh, signals. So every every variable is a sort of signal. For you can imagine circuits like electronics circuits, right? So in electronics circuits also we have signals in in inputs and outputs as well. So here we are accepting three private inputs. We are calling it A, B, and C, and we have one one public input. It's called C, right? And we create a output signal called out. Yeah. And this this is that we are forcing a constraint. We are basically forcing a plus b to be equal to c, which is provided a public input. So if so if a, uh, we can basically prove that two plus two equals four without uh, getting to know what uh, what the first two variables were. We don't need to know that they were two and two. Yeah, that's what. So they can be one and three, or they can be three and one. We, we, we don't really need to know here. So this basically creates a const constraint for addition. We can do one for multiplication as well, like this. It's pretty simple. And whatever we need to give as a output, we just uh, force a constraint and we assign to the output variable. So as you can see, it's pretty simple, right? Yeah. So as soon as we are done with the, so is anyone falling around or sh sh should I wait? Yeah, cool. So if anyone wants to compile it and generate inputs, and so first of all, we from the uh, Socom circuit, we create a compiled version, and it's called uh, it's a it's basically JSON representation of the uh, constraint in the circuit, right? And then we basically have to create inputs. So the in inputs for this would basically be A, B, C, uh, A, B, D, and C, right? So we just Put that in a file. I can show you that part. Yeah. <coughs> uh, yeah. So this thing basically is the. Can you zoom in Yeah, sure. Yeah. So here we just pass the inputs. 2, 4, 6, and 24, and we create an input.json, right, which which has all of these variables, and, uh, and then we basically, uh, when we have input.json ready, we create a, we calculate witness, which is like the inputs we are going to provide to Snark that uh, what, uh, that the input basically, uh, Satisfies all the constraints defined in the circuit. So if if so if this command throws an error, that that basically means your inputs not not going to pass the snark circuit. That so something is wrong with the input, right? And this is the just a setup. It's currently only uh, on on your laptop, so it's uh, it's going to be pretty unsafe. And then then we can create a proof and we can do snark just verify, which will basically tell you if the the proof was right or not. So if, if it displays OK, then it was good. If it says invalid, then something went wrong. Your input did, did not satisfy all the constraints 
defined in the circuit, right? Yeah, sure. What's growth? Yeah? What's growth and what are the other options? Sure. So, growth is like a growth 16, which is the most efficient prover. There are some other options. You can do dash dash protocol and uh, help. Uh, it's like, I guess, I, I don't really know. I've always been using this one, right? Yeah, across the um, yeah. yeah. So if you got if you guys want I can uh, you know uh, run these and show you but it takes quite a while to run all the proofs. Right? So I'm gonna hop hop ahead. If someone wants to run I'll be happy to, you know, debug if there's any issues. Cool. So we uh, so we are going to verify a uh, EDDSA <coughs> signature next. So uh, so in Snarks is it's much more easier to verify a uh, EDDSA signature than Ethereum or Bitcoin signatures uh, because it requires less lesser number of constraints, right? So so there's a library called Circumlib and they export a uh, a template. It's called EDDSA MIMC verifier. Have you heard? Uh, so there's a, there's a hash function called MIMC uh, because SHA-256 is like way too costly to use inside a snark. So this is like a uh, so MIMC uses much less number of constraints and it's uh, therefore the proving time is low. And for the purpose of, of this workshop, this uh, this level of security should be just fine, right? So so it's very easy to use this template we just like pass the from uh, the so the uh, you know e, uh, for a eddsa pub key there are two parts the x coordinate and there's a y y coordinate right so in the verifier uh, uh, we, we, we uh, ax we call the we send the x coordinate and here we send the y coordinate and this is part parts of uh, signature and this is the message that we want to check the signature against, right? So if it uh, all, if the calculate witness things run smoothly, then your signature was basically correct, right? Yeah. So, okay. there was another which verifier we should use? Yeah. You said that this verifier is only for the demo proof right? Mm -hmm. Which one? That is more efficient but not very secure. Yeah. Uh, correct? The security is not uh, widely uh, researched yet, so people uh, generally tend to avoid this because it's not uh, the security is not really proven at the moment. But it's not it's not broken. It's it's not proven either. So we so people generally tend to avoid it, but it's fine for the case of workshop. It's very hard to prove the security hash function. So we see we think it's alright. Today we have something for like a twenty thousand dollar battery of conditions. Yeah. Um, but we still don't know. So that's what we're going to say. Yeah. And if not seen, is there any other one which works well? Oh. Uh, or Peterson works pretty good. That is something we're pretty confident about. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But that's all right, I think. Sorry. But that's not as slow, I think, right? It's it's what it's not as slow as one fifty six. But it's slow as it's what is the what I don't tend to be private because this is already kind of you know, it don't take any information yeah, about no. the private key, so what is going to private key? No. In in this we are just trying to verify a, a signature inside a snap. We are not trying to make things private in this circuit. Yeah. Uh, yeah, uh, because while so, so while doing uh, while verifying uh, transaction for from for roll up. We'll, we'll we'll have to verify if the if a transaction submitted by a from address is actually signed by. Got it. So no privacy. No, no. Yeah. Cool. So, uh, yeah. The next part is like verify uh, like creating a Merkle root for given leaves, and yeah. So, uh, so in here we we basically have two or three variables which like. Uh, Part to root is basically uh, the, the leaves in the Merkle proof, right? Uh, and part to root position is basically binary vector. So if so, if the leaf, uh, so so let's say there's a leaf at index zero in part to root, 
So part to root position at index 0 will basically have 0 or 1. 0 means that the leaf is left, 1 means it, it's right. right? So we'll see how, how, how that's used in uh, like later. Right? This is an output signal. So multi c 7 basically creates a hash if you provide it uh, inputs. The, 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 the first parameter here, 2, is like the number of inputs you want to give it. Right, so, uh, so yeah, so if if part part to root position is zero, uh, the Merkle root, the first input to MIMC becomes uh, the, the the leaf itself, right? So this is how the binary vectorization works. So so if if this this thing is zero, then the first input becomes leaf, and uh, because this thing is also zero the second input becomes the sibling, right? And if, if it's one, then uh, the, the first input becomes part the leaf, and the second input becomes the actual leaf that we want to prove the uh, path, path for, right? Does that make sense? Cool. Yeah. So we then, then we basically just do the same thing, but o over a loop. Right, uh, and like we can just basically co copy paste this part over here, and uh, as soon as we, we have filled all the uh, all the inputs, if we if we do Merkle root dot out, which is basically uh, this this template dot out, so it basically gives us a hash of the leaf, right? So whatever we have passed passed over here, doing dot out over it gives us a hash. So if we give like Two and three dot out gives us a hash of those two inputs, right? So it's so basically used to create hashes of leaves so that we can get a Merkle tree, right? Uh, yeah, and this part is checking the existence of a leaf in a tree. It's 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 also pretty uh, pretty basic. We just like uh, take the paths uh, and we assign elements like we did over here, over here. And this part basically tells us if the dx root that we have given, if the if the root root given over here matches the root that uh, we have just created inside the snark, right? Is that a basic anything? There is an operator, the arrows to pass something right on the yeah, uh, yeah. This was basically designed as a workshop, so because of bad internet connections, uh, I tried to skip it, but uh, so. So people basically had to enter these values, but I can show you the snark circuit over here. Yeah. So yeah. Maybe at the end we can like let people try and fill in the stuff and help people if we like the time. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Sure. Sounds good. Yeah. So just to uh, show you the circuit. Whatever was 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 missing is present in a uh, in in this file. It's so it's present on GitHub. I'll uh, I'll give out the link in a while. Yeah. So it's uh, the samples circuits are present here, right? So whatever was missing over there is. Yeah. So. Uh, so uh, I'm just going to do how deposits work, how withdraw work in a roll-up chain, right? So basically, uh, the <coughs> operator gets all the transaction, and it it uh, like let's say a snark path is supposed to be of 10, 10 transactions, right? So the operator, uh, if he if he has 20 transactions, he picks up top top 10 according to the correct norms, and he provides it to the uh, snark circuit and we, we, we go from root 1 to root 2 and we submit all the transactions and the snark proof on chain so yeah this is how state <coughs> transitions work for snark uh, for uh, roll up right so the account is uh, basically like this uh, the x coordinate of the public key the y coordinate the balance nonce and the token type right and the leaf is basically the hash of all of this. 
right? But but for the workshop, we are just going to do balance only. So no no norms, no token type. But we can uh, in in a roll-up chain, we can actually have multiple tokens trading uh, simultaneously, and the operator can accept fees in any or all of them, right? So yeah. Yeah, so this is how uh, account looks like. So it's a key balance nonce and type, and uh, the balance history is this. Right. So we basically <laughs> change the account route every time we sub submit a batch on chain. Right. Uh, yeah. And in a transaction, we have from we have from from index, which is like the leaf index in the Merkle tree. And we have uh, two address and amount nonce, uh, the, the token type. Yeah. So deposits to uh, roll up chain are like uh, they are they are pretty interesting. So what we do here is uh, deposits happen totally on chain, right? So as soon as someone uh, de deposits, uh, let's say one one ETH, it's pushed to an array. As soon as someone deposits, uh, someone does a second deposit, both the deposits are ha uh, hashed together, and they are uh, they are like a, a tree is created, right? So yeah, this is the first 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 deposit, second deposit, and it's the hash. Then as soon as we have a third deposit, uh, then we wait for a fourth deposit. As soon as it's, as it's done, we create a hash and we combine them together. So what so what 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 we can do is. Whenever we we want to include the deposits in the roll-up chain, we just pick up the latest root and we attach it to the existing balance tree. So so we create a whole new subtree and a snark proof is create, created, which which basically just proves that this 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 leaf was empty and uh, the the deposit tree has been inserted over here. Yeah. Yeah, so uh, th this was the old account tree, and now the new account tree becomes the, that that whole thing, and just the deposit root gets placed over here. Right? So withdrawing also, withdrawing is also like a simple state transition, like like a transfer state state transition. So like people just send their tokens to leaf index zero. Which is which can only receive tokens. Leaf 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 number zero cannot actually spend any token. This is defined in the snark. So people have to do a transfer to leaf index zero, and then they can go on chain, and then they can prove in the latest uh, Merkle root that it did a, a transaction to leaf index zero, and they'll get their token back from the deposit pool, right? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, earlier you had mentioned that the uh, ZK rollup is a DNA data availability assumption. Sure. But don't you need data availability assumptions to be able to properly process a withdrawal um, from yeah. your market tree because you need to know the intermediary trees? So, uh, so with every snap uh, proof that we submit on chain, we submit a condensed form of Transaction, right? So, using that, uh, anyone can come and prove that, uh, like, basically all the all the transactions that have been processed in the latest NAC are, are 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 present on chain. So the data availability is same as Ethereum chain. Yeah. Uh, <coughs> I just missed it. Okay. It seems like I mean, does this example really have anything to do with accounts? And Balances, or there's just a state transition function from trees to trees, and you're trying to show that basically the tree, the, the trees that were produced were correct. Or I don't. What does that do to the accounts and balances, really? Yeah. So, so in the state transition function, right, which is like written inside a snark, we we basically say that uh, let's say Alice is transferring fifty dollars to Bob, right? So in that we basically check if Alice exists in the tree. If he has fifty dollars to spend, and then we basically change his, uh, let's say Alice had hundred, right? So we change his balance from hundred to fifty, and we in increment Bob's balance if he exists in the tree from zero to let's say fifty, 
and we update the snark, snark, uh, muggle root. Yeah, so this is how state transition happened, and we submitted the updated root on chain. Does that answer your question? Yeah, so it's not really about account. It's pretty general. Yeah, it's pretty general. Yeah. You, it's like you, yeah, you can basically store anything inside the leaf and write a state transition around it. With some condition. Yeah, with some condition. Anything that can be. Yeah, so uh, this is uh, basically just like uh, doing all the checks inside the snark. I'm, I think I'm going to skip all the steps and we are going to go to the final circuit so I can show you how it's, how it's actually happening. Only by the one transaction. Just one. Uh, for for validating multiple trans transactions, you you just uh, do the same thing with the for loop for the number of number of transactions you you want to process. Uh, right now it says only one, but I have a section over here which is for multiple transactions. Okay. And you can like, okay. check it out. Uh, why why do you uh, do it with an intermediate root? Yeah. So uh, yeah. So after. There. It was a previous patient. Okay. Uh, so the thing is, as soon as we process one input, we should update the uh, accounts uh, tree. Otherwise, if a if a leaf is changing multiple times inside the same batch, then it may be able to double spend, right? So let's say in a batch, uh, Alice was Alice had only fifty bucks, and she was uh, like able to get both of those transactions in the same batch. So if we don't update the Merkle root after processing every transaction, then when the when the snark is uh, processing the second transaction of Alice, he, uh, the circuit will never know that uh, a previous transaction already spent the 50 bucks that she had. Right? Make sense? Yeah, so this is uh, pretty, uh, pretty standard. We, uh, we, ex we like take the inputs as like uh, the previous account routes, the in intermediate route, uh, since this is just for one transaction, so it has only one in intermediate route. If you wanted to do multiple, this would be an array. And here is, uh, these are all the accounts, these are all the balances, uh, the balances uh, in, a, in an array. And uh, here's, here's where you pro provide all the transaction input, right? Which is like the send up of key, send up balance, receive up of key, receiver balance, amount, uh, the sender signatures, and the uh, uh, proof of existence for sender and receiver, right? And we output the new accounts root after processing everything, right? Cool. So, uh, in the so, so in, uh, I guess. Part three, we we did a part where we uh, in part two we we did a part where we showed the existence of Merkle leaf, I guess. Yeah, leaf existence, right? So using this template uh, over here. Hmm. Yeah. So. Using that, we are basically going to prove that a sender account exists in the previous account root, which is provided as an input, right? So we just pass the pub keys and balance, uh, and yeah, we do the same thing for all the senders given, given, given in the batch, right? And then we just do a simple signature check that if the sender has actually signed uh, the, the message, yeah, and then we create a new uh, leaf hash. So if the, the so if the leaf hash previously contained like a key uh, balance, which was fifty, then after after uh, spending fifty, his his uh, uh, leaf would look like a key and zero. So we need to create new hash for this, and we need to update the accounts root. So this is the this this basically outputs the intermediate root. Right. Yeah. And using this intermediate route, we basically check if the receiver exists in in the tree or not. If we exist, then we credit the receiver with whatever amount was sent by the uh, sender. Uh, 
yeah. Yeah. Here's here's where we debit the sender, and this is where we credit the receiver, and then we basically just up, uh, like create a new new leaf for the receiver again, and we update the root for it, right? And we just uh, output the final root as the newly uh, new new root of the new merger tree with up updated balance. Right, and then we just like um, then we run the below commands, and we get a proof which 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 we can submit on chain with the many five transactions, right? So that we basically proves that the state tran transition that was run off chain was valid, and we push the transaction on chain for data of availability. So where was the check that the transaction hash corresponds to? <coughs> The transaction hash, the previous transaction, I'm uh, sorry, transaction the account uh, matches the the leaf the account information, the previous account information matches the leaf. Yeah, yeah. So basically, if the, if the so uh, let me re rephrase the question, and you can tell me if I'm correct or not, right? So you are basically asking if the accounts root submitted over here, if it had if it had the correct balance that Alice gave me or not? Yeah. If it did not, then when I submit on chain the the previous uh, root hash is submitted on chain won't won't match with the input submitted over here. Right? So so it has it has to be changed. That makes sense? Cool. Uh, yeah so I wanted to like uh, like uh, create a smart contract via this like generate verifier call and this basically creates what the, the proof that we need to push on chain. Right, so if you guys want to try this out, then maybe we can do that uh, now. Yeah. Are there any questions about this? Yeah. So. Maybe take the link. Maybe take again. So. Yeah. should always equal a plus b at that time uh, i do the angle bracket and equals right so uh, so there's a link in uh, in this workshop which which basically directs to iden 3's blog post on how, how to use snapjs and circum uh, uh, so that basically has an uh, explanation on how to use all the operators there yeah. Thank you. 
and you can clone the this 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 repo for all the code base, all the sample circuits, and input uh, JavaScript files.
copy paste this code and then, then we can move forward with it. Correctly, which which basically means that uh, we are running the input that we created against all the constraints in the circuit, then it basically means that the proof which is generated would most likely be correct. We can uh, I can try changing the input and see if it breaks, right? If I change any inputs and A plus B don't don't equal the C uh, C thing, then uh, it will basically show that the constraint does not match, right? So uh, you can do the sa same thing for verifying the EDD as a signature and uh, doing the Merkle tree proofs, like proving that a leaf exists in a Merkle tree and creating a Merkle root. All of that stuff. Yeah, uh, so I'm gonna try uh, processing a single transaction over here. Yeah, so in the file structure, uh, yeah, if you if you go to uh, the fourth folder called single case, it basically has the circuit and the uh, yeah. Uh, the calculate witness does it. There's no output? Yeah. Uh, where, where does it go? Yeah. So, it, so it creates a file called witness.json and it has all the public and private inputs. All the public inputs. Yeah. yeah. Well, the uh, same as a input JSON basically? No. Uh, so it has uh, all the uh, input. JSON is basically all the inputs you need to provide uh, to pro uh, you need to provide to calculate witness to create a witness. Can you open it one more time? Sure. Is it? Uh, and so, so it has. Yeah. You got uh, just so the numbers that are listed here. I mean they're. Not, they don't really, they, they don't need anything like whatever they're random or they're kind of like random. But yeah. the length of this thing is short. You're basically also saying that the length of this thing is short because it's. Okay. I just so I understand like the length that, of this array of whatever five numbers. It's yeah. because the circuit is very simple. Yeah, exactly, exactly. So 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 for a circuit with uh, uh, like larger number of constraints. The witness file would also be large because the number check on. So it depends on the number of inputs you are giving. And this is all kind of new to me. So the constraints that are there versus the computation that happens, like how does that affect the size of this thing? Like if the constraints are 
like, you know, for example, computing and initial hash, you said, I mean, yeah, there's lots of computation there, but there's very little logical constraints about, like, the size, the assertions that you make on it. Like, here you have assertions that, about the arguments, but then, you know, you may produce, like, bindings inside of a circuit to, like, bind new variables and say that, like, also this, so, like, does that make sense, like, when you make circuits like this, just, like, what constraints on things matter versus, like, just raw computation, they're, like, yeah, so, like, every, uh, you want to go ahead? Okay. Um, so, let me repeat the question to make sure I can Yeah. So, what you're trying to do is get an intuition for, like, the, this idea of constraints, like, how many constraints matter and stuff like that. Or versus, like, raw computation, or so, like, I can say something like, like, the lead binding in this language, or whatever, that says, like, let A equal hash of these things, versus, like, a plus B equals C is like the assertion that the inputs have to follow. Right? So you want to see what's the difference between the witness calculation and the constraints. Yeah. So, okay, the witness calculation is insignificant compared to the actual constraints. Yeah. yeah, it's just like that. Yeah. I mean, in, in some languages it takes longer, but that's just because they're not very well optimized. But like when you when you get optimal, it's always, it's always going to be Yeah, so if, like, if we had a DEX, you would spend like 0.0001% of your time calculating the witness and all the rest of the time. Yeah, so uh, we can, we can uh, do the same thing. We, we just have to write a new circuit that, that we defined in the previous parts. And we really have to like uh, check the senders leave uh, receivers key the balances and we need to update the amounts right so i'll just move to like uh, processing a single transaction and we can you guys can try out the rest parts and i'll be here to help her out right tokens 
and Bob had uh, zero. So after transferring, Alice should have zero, right? So we create the intermediate root. As soon as we process a leaf, we, we need to create an intermediate root so that uh, Alice is not able to spend the 500 tokens she spent earlier again, mm -hmm. right? So we create a new uh, we so we create a new leaf hash and we declare it as the intermediate root. Then he update the uh, Bob's account, right? Uh, with 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 the money he got from Alice, and we create a, a root, uh, and we create a leaf hash for it, and that's the final root. And we pass all of this as inputs. We pass all of this as inputs to the circuit, and we dump all, all of this data in input.json file, right? And when we run, and when we basically run calculate witness, it uses these inputs to generate a witness, and later we can use the witness file to create proofs, right? Cool. You want me to try out, or you you guys want to do it? I can try. Yes, yeah, sure. So, so it take, takes a while because this circuit has lot, lot, lot many constraints than the previous one, and it basically uses other circuits. So, so like every signature verification adds its own uh, constraints. Uh, checking of Merkle root adds its own constraints, right? So it takes a while. This will create an input file for us. If I try to change the input or witness after this, it won't work. Uh, So you basically have to create a proof every time you create a new batch, right? Yeah. So, no. yeah. yeah. At most, we can do uh, we can like parallelize it and like uh, using like vanilla JS, we can predict if I process this this batch of transactions, the new Merkle root would be this, and I can uh, in parallel start processing next next batch while the proof for previous batch is being created. Yeah. Yeah. So I cre created the uh, proof before coming here because it, because it takes a lot of time. So if you guys want to try it out, maybe you can r run these commands. I can I can try running them, but it takes uh, quite a lot of time. A lot of time. How much? Whatever. So it depends on the number of constraints. For for this, it won't take like it will take like two two minutes. Okay. Yeah, so it's fine. Also, about the language.
Yeah, so uh, so this trusted setup is basically one party right now, but I guess uh, I think people have been working on doing M MPC with SnarkJS as well. So yeah. What is MPC? So it's like multi-party computation, and a lot of people are run the setup, and they're supposed to discard the toxic waste. Yeah. So if uh, let's say ten people uh, participate, and even if one of them is honest, then it should be fine. Right. And be because we are uh, we are the same participant over here, if, if we can basically create uh, like uh, create false proofs. But if we had multiple participants, like let's say 100, 200, then it should be fine. Yeah, so it takes a lot of time. I can't know anything about it. So, so if you guys want to try it out, uh, I'll be here to help out. And I'll be here to, uh, if you have any questions and stuff. Yeah. What, 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 what about the debug tools? So if I I think there's a log log flag, so you, you can actually write write logs. But I guess uh, people are still working on a compiler, so I guess it should be out soon. If you wish to switch the proof system, like Sonic or some other one, how many of which of these libraries you would Reuse and which you have to throw away. And, you know, is there anything that you would reuse if, it, if you change the proving system? I guess we'll we'll have to create new uh, new libraries for the new proving systems. Yeah, so I guess we'll have to create but new. See, it's, 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 it would be the same. The circuit uh, compiler that will stay or, or no? uh, so the, the the compiler is. Just for like going from uh, Circom language mm -hmm. to the R1 CS constraints. So that part uh, yeah, that that part can most most probably stay. From there, if if there's a new proving system out, you can maybe use that part. Mm -hmm. It's likely that there's some some different optimization packages that you have, but the optimizers are coming to several. Okay, so you can still have a lot of language stuff with CS and then. But if you want to do stacks, it's a different story. Yeah. And if you want to do, I think Blanc is a little bit different. Okay, so we'll see how it's done. So that is a little bit different. I think I maybe finally understood what you were, or 
maybe not, but what you said about the parallel computation. So is it possible to put like a proof constraint in this language also? Like basically like what I would say is like these arguments satisfy, like let's say you wanted to run something like in parallel or whatever, like I have some setup which is like, yeah, the arguments to this thing also satisfy like this relationship between each other and I want to express the fact that there is a proof of this in you. Or I guess what I'm saying is that you run around them in parallel and say you had some really expensive thing you was going to run before some other really expensive thing that you just wanted to express that like it was all going to match up if you did to create one circuit between the two of them. Like rather than having like one function that describes something really complicated, you could break it up and then basically like you don't save any time by basically breaking up into smaller pieces that would compose to like a larger circuit drivers because you have several you have tons of constraints or whatever if you that are all related to the same data and maybe some of them could have been run in parallel do you save any time by splitting them off into different circuits or yeah so uh, I guess we are already splitting them off into different uh, circuits so yeah uh, that 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 basically does not save us uh, much time because the, the circuit the constraints of those circuits are are combined and they are taken into like when we when we generate a proof yeah. those those, those con constraints are still added to the constraints of the original circuit oh. yeah, so there's no such thing as like multiple circuits yeah. you like run one 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 circuit yeah. there is kind of this idea of putting multiple nesting snakes on the snake in the snake yeah that thing that's in here or you just like you look this if you had some conditions about the data that like some of them need some of them are dependent on others or whatever, like you had some relationship between all of them. So, yeah, so like this you can basically uh, like let's say you 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 ha have have a batch of transactions. Right? Yeah. So even even before the circuit creates a proof of them, you can basically say if all if if all the transactions in the batch are correct then this will be the new proof and you can use the new route to run another proof in parallel of that. So if yeah, that's that's very right. So if the first first proof is uh, like if it runs uh, perfectly, then we can uh, we don't we don't really have to wait to like uh, start start the process again. That 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 thing can be parallel. Yeah. How expensive to verify a snark in SNARK? for this tool system.